former students or alumni, these, I know all of these students, they're so wonderful, and uh, they'll tell, tell their individual stories of what happened at DP and, and what happened in college, and then you'll have a chance to ask them questions. Um, so that, we're excited about that. We did have, actually have a larger panel, unfortunately two of them had to, to, uh, to uh, not, they couldn't attend last night, one got ill, and his story uh, about his time deciding after getting into some four-year shows going to City College was a really powerful story here. So too bad we can't hear that one. And the other one was really cool where uh, we have a former student who didn't go to college and uh, is the skills that he learned in the DP Media program got him a job on the Taylor Swift tour. And he's making great money traveling all over the world with her and doing what he learned in DP News and, and making a lovely living. And so that was a bummer that he couldn't make it here because I was excited to have him with you. Anyway, um, so really grateful to have you all here. Um, I'm going to have each of them introduce themselves, what year they graduated, something they did at DP, what, what program they were in, or what, what they like, memory or whatnot, and then their journey through in college where they are now, and just a little bit about that. And then I'll be asking you guys questions to moderate. So start with you, Ben, and we'll go all the way down. All right, everyone. Hello. Uh, my name is Ben Bishop. Uh, I graduated in 2021. I currently attend Northeastern University, which is in the heart of Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I, and I study computer science and design. Uh, I participated in a number of programs during my time at DP, uh, but primarily both the Engineering Academy uh, and I was also a leader in the media program for both DP News and Yearbook, all four years of high school. Um, and as a part of both of those programs, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't choose which to kind of follow through with in college. Um, I, I really love the visual element of design as well as the very technical element of computer science. So I chose a school with majors that I could um, where I could express both of those passions. Uh, so yeah, did I miss anything on the checklist? Yeah, awesome. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Tara Woodard. I also graduated 2021 then, um, and I'm currently going to my third year at uh, UCLA in Los Angeles. Um, I'm studying sociology and minoring in film, television, digital media, and digital humanities. Um, and definitely one of my highlights um, from my DP career was DP News. I was very involved with that. It was my passion. I loved everything about it. Um, and it's definitely carried on to college with me, um, where I'm studying film and all of that. Um, what drew me to UCLA in the first place was just it has so much going on. Um, and you know, I'm the kind of person who really loves a lot of different things, and so that's what um, UCLA had to offer for me, and what I find is very true today. Um, even though I'm a very like creative and visual person myself, I'm like very good friends with super STEM-oriented people, and I have friends in different corners of the school, so that's really fun, and it's a great way to get to know a lot of different people. Um, hi, I'm Maddie. I graduated from DP in 2022, and I'm currently a second year chemical engineering major at UCI. Um, I think one of my favorite experiences at DP was being in leadership and in ASB. It was really such a fun experience, especially like coming right out of COVID. Um, so that was really a highlight um, of DP for me. Um, so yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Alvaro Baca. I graduated in 2022 and I am currently a sophomore at UC Davis and I'm studying history and Spanish. Um, while at DP, I was in a lot of programs. I was in IB, AVID, and engineering. And for me, um, the AVID program was especially impactful just because there was like so many students like around me, a community that was built. Um, and I was able to find a lot of colleges look through them, look through the different programs they offered, and ultimately settled on the college, which is UC Davis, which I chose. Um, and so I think through that program, I was able to find like 
whoever it was in my senior year and like which college I wanted to go to and other options. And so I'm really grateful for the opportunity. Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin. I'm a fourth year at CSU Channel Islands, and I'm studying psychology. During DP, um, I was a part of AVID, and like Alvaro said, it was a really beneficial program for me, getting that one-on-one -on -one help from my AVID teacher and the counselor. It was something that really helped me with my process applying to college. Um, just coming from a first-generation family and no one going to college, it was hard. So having them was very helpful for me. My favorite memory at DP, I'm not sure if this counts, but it would be having a prom a year after since our prom was canceled because of COVID. Yes. For those of you that don't know the story, the class of 2020, the, their prom did get canceled. So a year later, Scotty G, the DP Foundation, the PTSA, put on a rockin' prom on the Canary balcony, and we invited them all back. It was cool, actually, it was really cool. So, we, uh, and they had a pretty good drive-in graduation ceremony, too. Right, so, uh, it's legendary now. Uh, well, thank you, that was really the first thing. So, I, I like to open up, I'm just gonna ask some, some questions, and then we'll open up for questions here, but I wanna, I wanna talk about your process for um, applying to college. So, how did you narrow down your schools? What resources did you use here at DP? Any advice for our current students that are either, raise your hand if you're a senior, about to start on this process. Of course they're, okay, very cool. Juniors, excellent. Sophomores, very cool. Any ninth graders in here? Yes, awesome, great. So you're gonna learn some really good tips. So just about the process itself, what was hard, what was easy, what resources did you use, like any tips you would give them? I'll start with Kayla, we'll go back around that, that other way. So, like I said, I did utilize AVID a lot. Um, just having that one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher and the counselor. Um, narrowing down school, it was honestly really hard for me. I applied to a handful of schools and I did get accepted to pretty much all of them. So it was really hard for me to choose. Um, I, to be honest, I didn't, uh, I didn't choose until like I think a week before the intent to enroll. Um, but originally I did uh, plan to go to Sacramento State and then I did transfer to CSU Channel Islands. Um, what was, oh, sorry, what was the next part of the any question? Advice, any advice for the current students? Any advice? Um, I would say to start the applications early, just so you don't get overwhelmed with the deadlines, and um, write your personal statements. Um, definitely answer each part of the prompt, um, but also like don't let yourself get too stuck in it, and just let let your mind say what you want to say. I just have a question for us. Could you maybe expand a little bit on? why you made the change of school and why it was a good move for yourself? Um, so my first two years at Sacramento State, they were online because of COVID and I didn't go until last year, my third year. And it was a pretty big change for me just coming from straight um, online to going to fully in person was a pretty big change and going to a big city. Uh, for me, when it got to the time to enroll into the major classes that I needed, I found it pretty hard to get the classes that I needed in order to graduate since Sacramento was such a heavily populated campus and psychology is an impacted major. It was really hard for me to get those classes, but ever since being at Channel Islands, I find that it's easier for me to get into those classes that I needed to graduate since it is a lot smaller of a campus. Um, so as Caitlin said, we were both in AVID and so the one-on-one -on -one help was also really helpful. But for me, um, the first thing I did, I was Googling like, which schools are the best for my major in California? Because I, first off, I already knew I didn't want to leave the state. Um, I just didn't want to go too far from home, but I also didn't want to stay 
um, here in Santa Barbara. And so after that, I started narrowing down. I started looking at, okay, is it a city? Does it first? I look. I know it's a little superficial, but I looked at, to see if the school was pretty or not because I didn't want to go to any ugly school. Um, and so after that, I went to like, okay, is there is it a bike friendly campus or can I drive there? Um, are there apartments on campus? Do they offer good food? Um, stuff like that. And so once I had looked through and made my list, then I decided to apply. Um, yeah. Um, to be honest, I got really lucky in where I ended up and I really wish I had done more research because I think I really, I ended up at the perfect place by accident. Um, I really, when I applied to school, I applied to the city that it was in and didn't think as much about the school that I was applying to. I knew I wanted to go somewhere big, but, and I knew I, I wanted to go somewhere good for engineering and STEM, but um, I think some important things that I wish I'd looked into at you seniors is look into housing like long term <laughs> at where you're going um, like specifically look into your department that you're going into um, I got really lucky actually um, I got accepted to UCI for my second choice major um, which was a bit of a shock but my second choice major is now like my forever career and I love it so I think part of my advice is to roll with the punches like the college process is not going to be what you expect um, I had my heart set on one school, and I didn't end up getting in, and it all worked out perfectly. So, as much as it feels like it's the end of the world, and it feels like you have to go to one place, or like your whole life plan that you have might not work, like it's gonna work out. I didn't even get the major that I wanted, and I feel like I'm so much happier now in the major that I didn't even want in senior year. So, it'll all work out, but do your research before you apply. Um, I think a lot of people nowadays might be intimidated because college, applying to college seems like a really competitive process, which it can be, um, but I feel like the biggest thing that helped me during my application, like both choosing schools and both like during, um, like when I was filling out my applications was keeping it very focused. Um, I only applied to um, eight schools, it was a mix of UC, CSU, and private. Um, and they were all in state. Um, I didn't apply to like super crazy reach schools or anything. You know, I kept it very focused. Um, and for my application, um, I feel like keeping that focus is what really helped me. Um, I don't think I got rejected from any schools. I only got acceptances and waitlists. But it was because during my application, it was all focused on pretty much one thing, and that was my love for like creativity and. Um, media production. I feel like a lot of people might be intimidated, like I have to be the most well-rounded student, I have to be, do varsity sports, I have to do engineering, I have to do like a bunch of different things all around the school, but that's really not the case, because colleges, they're looking for people to fill specific niches on their campus. And if you're like super well-rounded, that might be good, but it might hurt you in some ways, in that like you, they don't know kind of what niche you're gonna fill. Um, so I would say just find really what your passion is and what you value um, in this world, and those sorts of activities, and just focus on those and make you stand out in that way. Like I did sports and stuff like that. I didn't even put that on my application um, because it wasn't really that relevant to what I was truly passionate about and what I truly felt like could contribute um, to the schools that I applied to. So really just, you know, Focus on your values. I would say that's basically the most important thing in your application. Um, so my path to Northeastern was very unique. Um, I applied during, or my entire college application process was during the pandemic, uh, during our fully remote senior year at Dos Pueblos. So um, I did most of my research uh, as a very technical person using SCORE, which is the counseling software that DP offers to all students for free. It's fantastic. You can type in all the things that you're interested in with colleges, um, or even just what you might be interested in. Size of school, size of campus, uh, programs offered, all of that stuff, and you just kind of build out your profile, 
and then it does all of the hard work for you. It builds your, it basically builds your list for you. Um, you can read reviews from other students. You can view the, like, the average, like grade point average from other DP students and then other people who went to the college. It kind of aggregates all of the data that is all over the internet into one place and it's what the counselors use too. So when I would have questions for Scotty, my counselor, um, he, could, he, could, he could give me the answer pretty easily. So um, that, that's my main tip, but I, I'm, I'm not a perfect straight A student. I, um, I struggled in certain subjects that, didn't, that weren't super interesting to me while I was in high school. Like I persevered, but um, I, I was not a straight A student. But um, I, in my application essay, I told a story about how one time uh, I was running a live interview on DP News and accidentally um, went live 30 seconds before anyone knew we were live and we were broadcasting to the whole school, uh, just the back of my shirt and us just kind of running around trying to get ready. Um, and I told that story. It didn't really have anything to do with what I ended up pursuing in college, but that honesty is, is what I think kind of help give me that extra push into Northeastern, which is a pretty competitive school. Um, and I also applied to 17 California colleges and applied on the day it was due with no research to one East Coast school, uh, just because my mom said, I, you, you should just put one hat in the ring because maybe you'll like it. Toured all these California schools and then um, ended up touring Northeastern after I got in um, and just totally falling in love. So. Yeah, those are, that's a couple tips there, but uh, apply out of your comfort zone to at least one school um, and, and be open to many things like many others on the panel have said. Um, I had no idea I would end up going to a school 4,000 miles away um, that I applied to on the day it was due with my Common App essay, but it's where I landed, so yeah. That's a cool story, Ben. I didn't know that, yeah. Um, before we take questions from the audience, I wanted to share, uh, for all of us, a couple resources that since they've been here, we've added to Dos Pueblos. We have now a dedicated college and career counselor. And her job, her name is Natalie Douglas. It's her first year, and there's one in each of the high schools. And while your counselor is your, your go-to person and will meet with you all for all four years, um, Ms. Douglas can sit down with you and work on your college apps together. So you can make appointments to go to the college, the career center, and sit down and crank out your app to throw, or get some advice on your personal statements, or ask, ask questions about different schools, or do the research with, on the score that Ben talked about. So that's a great resource we have on campus that we didn't have a few years ago, that I see a lot of seniors right now are trickling into uh, the College Career Center, and I'm sure in the spring a lot of our juniors are gonna start doing that. So one of the tips, I think, is they talk about their personal statements, which I think now that most colleges are SAT either blind or optional, really what they talked about is your, your personal statement and telling your story is, I, I hear over and over again, is an important thing. I think you guys would all agree that that's a really important part of the process. So getting to know your counselor who can, if you're applying to private schools, write that great letter of recommendation about your passion, but then also share your passion in those. Uh, in those personal statements if you're writing them for colleges. So, um, I, we could talk all night, but I want to make sure you guys have a chance to ask any questions you have. Parents can ask questions, students can ask questions. I have the mic, I'm gonna play, I don't know, Oprah? I don't know, she doesn't run around anymore. Who runs around? So if anybody has a question, I got tons, I can keep asking, but does anybody have a question they'd like to ask? Yes, all right. And you can direct it to one of them or all of them. Hi, I appreciate you, uh, you guys uh, sharing your stories uh, with us tonight. Um, and congratulations to all of you on uh, getting into a four-year school. Just, just curious if, um, if you ever considered, before you started your four-year journey, to just go here to City College here in Santa Barbara. I very much, it's, it's definitely hindsight is 2020. Um, uh, after starting at Northeastern, and despite scholarships and other um, assistance, it's 
still super, it's still a very expensive school. And um, as I went through my first two years at Northeastern and did the intro classes for my major um, and kind of, per and just got involved in clubs and all that, um, I looked over and kept in touch with my friends at City College who were doing basically the same thing I was for free. Um, their books were paid, everything was uh, paid for, and I actually know a couple people who took enough City College classes in high school that they were able to graduate with their associate's degree in one year. So um, that's, that is most definitely a path I wish I could have taken, and the transfer rate, the guaranteed transfer program to uh, many, program, uh, many majors at the UCs, and also uh, the uh, transfer rate out of City College is so high that it's, it doesn't even, it, it feels like a stepping stone to a college and not, and not your final destination. So yeah, I, I wish I had made, I wish I would have thought about it more during my senior year. Um, personally, I have always been like a pretty independent person, so I felt like I was ready to make the move straight to a four year, but I think it is 100% a, a, a perfect option for people who, you know, may not feel exactly ready to you know, leave home yet, or they're just looking for a less expensive option. I think it's great. I know a lot of people at my school, um, you know, which is a pretty competitive school, they're transfers and they've had great success in different programs and they are getting, I would say, an equally good experience as students who entered as um, first year admits. Um, and I feel like in a way I took advantage of the City College here because I took a lot of dual enrollment classes in um, high school. I only took, I took AP and IB classes, but I only took one AP exam and I didn't take any IB exams. Obviously my senior year being affected by COVID really, you know, played a part in that, but because I took a lot of um, City College classes, it was less stressful, I didn't have to worry about the test at the end of the year. I entered with a lot of credits in college, which saved me like a ton of money and a ton of time. Um, so I feel like even students who are looking into going straight into four years definitely take advantage of that dual enrollment program because it is a lot, it is pretty much the same route as AP and IB, um, but in my opinion it is equally if not more beneficial. So I feel like there's a way to incorporate that city college access we have here, um, both for students who aren't going to four years right away and students who are. Um, I think I kind of just repeat what they said, but I wish I had considered it a little more. A lot of my friends seem really happy at city college, um, my friends from high school, and then also echoing um, for any like student at DP that's interested in going to a UC, often the classes that you took dual enrollment count for more than the AP classes when you go to the university. Like, for example, taking English 110, 111 um, counts for more than taking both AP Lit and AP Lang at UCI, probably at the other UCs as well. So just something to think about when you're taking or signing up for dual enrollment classes at DP. It really does matter and it's really helpful. Um, echoing what the other panelists said. Um, I took a lot of dual enrollment classes as well, but um, for UC Davis specifically, um, a lot of the, the dual enrollment classes, they covered a lot of my prerequisites. Um, and so I only really had to take like a quarter of prerequisites, and now I'm on to completely just major and minor classes. So with that, I could graduate in three years if I wanted to, or study abroad without you know feeling that I need to rush my classes. Um, and so for City College, I definitely considered it um, to take my prerequisites. But um, after a talk with my counselor, I realized that most of my prerequisites um, counted at UC Davis anyway. So uh, um, just for me, I thought it would be better to go to straight to four year. Personally, I did think about City College just because it is such a great option. Um, but I didn't choose to go there just because I wanted to go straight into the four year. Um, but I do think that um, it is a great option just because I have taken City College classes as well during the summers and um, it has helped with my um, requirements for graduating. I'll just add, um, 
everybody's different, every student is different, and for example, my two students, my daughter, one, one was ready to go, and my uh, old, other daughter who's a senior at UP this year is planning on going to college next year, that's, that's her plan, she, get, she um, um, wants to stay in town, wants to take advantage of the Promise program, um, and figure out what she wants to do before she ends up graduating, so I think we celebrate all the choice, and I'm a product of San Diego City College myself. Ooh, go back to those. Um, so definitely feel like, and we're seeing more and more students, now that the Promise program is free books, free tuition at the top uh, community college in the entire nation in many respects and all the rankings. Um, and then they have a lot of transfer agreements that you can go directly to, and so, so sometimes students are being strategic about, I'm gonna go to City College, do really well there, and then I'm gonna transfer uh, into my four-year school once I figure that out, so that's good. Other questions from the audience? Yes. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. If you had to give advice to your high school graduating senior self and your incoming collegiate freshman self on how to best manage the stress and anxiety of maybe the culture shock of living in a new city, bigger city, further away, or on your own, what kind of advice would you give yourself? Love that question. What's your advice to your back in time high school self? Um, my advice is don't be afraid to find friends and be outgoing, at least for the first month. Um, just for me, moving to Davis, which is like six hours away, I knew nobody. Um, and so for me, it was a bit like, um, I don't know if anyone has seen like videos of babies being thrown into a pool and like being able to swim. That was me at Davis at first. Um, and, but once I found a close group of friends who are also the same major as me, we studied a lot, we went to cafes, we did a lot of stuff together. And so we really bonded over that. That made me feel so much better. My anxiety like went out the roof, I mean, went like out the window because I met friends. Uh, I became more outgoing because of that. Um, I just felt completely better. Um, and so that's my advice. Um, yeah, I think like moving to um, Orange County and Irvine in particular was like, it's a lot different from Santa Barbara. And I hadn't realized that I'd grown up, you know, I grew up in San I only grew up in Santa Barbara. And so I hadn't quite realized just how different the world is outside of Santa Barbara, I think. Um, and so one thing, like, advice to you seniors and wish I could have given myself is I was so worried that everybody was going to act how you usually do, but I hadn't considered that almost everyone going to college also has no friends yet. So it's not like, it's not like you're showing up in the middle of a year in high school. Everybody wants to make friends and they're all such lovely people. Um, I think some big advice would be, um, this is like kind of niche, but if you're a woman in STEM, really look for your women in those classes and make friends and make a group that um, can support each other in more like harsh STEM environments. Um, so I think that would be my advice is to really find a group of friends that you'll be in the library with till 4 a.m. And um, so yeah, I think that would be my advice. Personally, I feel like I was kind of blindsided by how big a change moving to college was. Um, because it was such a big adjustment right away, I thought that everyone else, or that everything else would just come as quickly, um, particularly in like the social aspects of it. Um, and I remember like my second day or something, I was like feeling really upset and crying just because I couldn't, I went to this like event and I just felt so out of place and felt so alone. And looking back on it, like it took me a while to find like my friends. And you know they were right on my floor, um, down the hall from me. And you know it took me to a winter quarter to find that. So I would say that just because a lot of it changes really fast doesn't mean everything will come as fast. And to really be patient with it and listen to how you're feeling and what your needs are, and um, just focus on yourself and really take it one day at a time. Like it is so cliche, but. Um, you know, you just you're feeling like an adult, and because you're like, I'm by myself. I'm in a new city. I'm in a, like you know, college. It's also like big and exciting, but really, you're just still an 18 year old kid who 
you know, cares a little bit too much what other people think. So, you know, it might take some time to like grow out of that and really find who you are as a person and find your group and find your interests and all that sort of thing. Uh, echoing what many other or the other panelists have said, um, be very open to new things. Um, I, it's. It's a little, like, there's not really much you can do while you're still in high school in the application process, um, but I think that if, th if you really value, like, close connections with your professors and teachers, um, or, sorry, with your teachers in high school, um, I would explore smaller schools. Um, I really liked that about Northeastern, though there wasn't any tours or anything like that when we were uh, walking around the empty campus my senior year. Um, I, from all the research I did online and uh, like kind of the Zoom tours um, that I participated in, uh, I was able to kind of find a, a school that when I got there I would be able to make a small community as a part of a big community. Um, I w looked into a lot of clubs when I got there and joined a really cool student events and music club and found a lot of friends through that. Um, and it's, hard, it's like being told, get involved and find friends and stuff is, is great coming from us, but um, also just approaching with a mindset of be open to new things and, be, and, and see, seek that out, but um, also don't, don't get too down if you're feeling like you're in a rut because it, these things usually have a way of working out, so. Yeah, that didn't really answer the question, but. <laughs> yeah, so I'd like to go the other way because we do have a lot of parents here. Um, one thing that you feel like your parents did that was really helpful, and one thing that if you give them advice as parents, what, they, what role they should be playing in this process and what role um, they, you feel like they shouldn't be playing in this process. So I, love my parents, I'm very thankful for, um, <laughs> this, that's not a, like, they, they were very supportive through my college admissions process, um, and it's tough that they haven't, done, like, that they haven't uh, navigated the very different college admissions landscape um, that's changed a lot in 25, 30 years since they were applying to colleges. Um, so, I, one thing I really appreciated about uh, my parents guiding me through this process is that they learned with me. They um, they didn't they they didn't um, like try and handhold me through the process. Um, I did the research on my own. I did I figured out how to apply to the colleges on my own. But um, they also learned that process too as I was doing it. Asked questions and asked if I needed help instead of trying to micromanage me through it. Um, which was really helpful, but um, they, I, it, was, it was nice to be able to go to them and be honest and say, I didn't actually start my Common App essay. Um, they, were, they were warm and guiding through that process. So yeah, that's, that's something I'd recommend, um, is to be open and be a resource for your students. Um, and don't try and make decisions for them. Let, the, let them find a place that is, is the right option for them. Um, I, if my mom had said, my, both my parents went to uh, public schools in California, and if my mom had said, maybe you want to go to a public school in California, I don't think I'd be as quite as happy as I am at Northeastern. So, uh, yeah, that's that's my word of advice. Um, but yeah, I guess if I had, I guess I'd, yeah, I don't really have any criticisms. Uh, I, I was I was very assertive in my college admissions process, but, um, and I'm happy where I landed. Um, so I'm very lucky to have a type A mother who is a college and career counselor. Um, so she definitely helped a lot, but like Ben said, I feel like the most valuable thing that my parents did in my college admissions process was never pressuring me into doing an option that I didn't want to do just because it was like a name brand school. Like, I was never, I never felt pressured to apply to somewhere where I felt like I could get in, and, or, you know, that was just 
a really fancy, well-known school. You know, it was all about what I wanted to do and where I felt like I would be the good, or which school would be the best fit for me, not only you know as a school, but financially and location-wise. Um, so I feel like, yeah, it may be cool to you know pressure your kid to apply to Harvard or Berkeley, but if that's really not where they feel like they'd be a good fit, um, I would say that it's not worth it just to like go through that extra process. Um, really, ultimately, is it is about your your child themselves, what they want to do, and what they feel like they would succeed in. Um, as my mom always says, it's college is a match to be made, not a prize to be won. Um, and you know the value should come from within the student itself, and not what kind of school they end up at or where you feel like they should go. Um, one thing that I feel like my parents did very well and I would recommend to other parents is to um, give your kid a lot of space. Um, there's a lot of pressure, you know, to get into whatever schools um, they want to go to and I feel like the more space you can give your child as they're applying, um, I was really independent in my process, and I really appreciated that, that, um, you know, I could spend a couple days processing, like, a wait list or a rejection before I felt ready to come to my parents, you know? Um, I really appreciated the space that they gave me. And then um, one piece of advice, just from, like, older relatives that sometimes, um, is that, again, the college process has changed dramatically since they went to college. Uh, and I think one thing you can do that's helpful for your child is to kind of leave any expectations at the door. Like, uh, you know, admission rates to a school you went to might have been a certain number when you went and are now like a quarter of that. Uh, so I think it's really helpful to like any senior who's applying to really give them, um, kind of have like a, a blank slate on what college is now because it has changed so much. Um, so yeah, that would be my advice. Um, my, well, one thing that my parents did that was really good was celebrate even the small achievements. If I got accepted into one of my safety schools with like a 100% acceptance rate, they would celebrate that a lot. And that, that meant a lot for me because even though I got waitlisted for some of my other schools, I got accepted into other schools. Um, knowing that they were there for me, even through like the littlest of achievements, you're like the biggest of, you know, of achievements as well, was like really heartwarming. Um, and also, a little off topic, but I really enjoyed my independence in space too. But moving into college, um, I really liked how my mom overpacked for me. Um, I know it might be a little counterintuitive, but listen to your parents, they know. Um, so she packed a really big like rain jacket that was like super burly, and I was like, I'm never gonna use this. And then January came around, and it was like the giant um, rainstorms, and there was like hail. And ended up using it for like a month straight, and so I'm just like really grateful for her that she did that for me. <laughs> so for me, my parents didn't go to college, so they didn't know that process. But what really helped me was how supportive they were with everything, even if it was just them sending me money for groceries. It meant a lot to me, and I did really appreciate it. And another thing was that how they just learned with me. So now they like remind me to do my FAFSA and just to make sure I turn it all in on time. We have time for one more question. So yes, actually I wish we had more time. Access to classes and counselors, great question. So for me, since my major is was impacted, um, it was pretty hard to get those classes that I needed to graduate. Um, so I mean, there's always the options of summer school or even during winter as well. Um, but it's just, it could be hard sometimes and it can get stressful just because you do want to finish in those four years. 
Um, but for counselors as well, they, I'm not sure about the other colleges, but for mine, they do offer counseling online through Zoom or uh, drop-ins, and they are very accessible. You could choose the time and the date that you want to meet with them, and they'll be able to help you. Um, so for Davis, because it is part of a UC system, um, a lot of the prerequisite classes, there was like 200 up to 300 students, just because everyone needs to take those classes. And so for those classes, I wasn't really that worried because there's so much space. They were all usually held in like auditoriums. Um, it wasn't really one-on-one. -on -one. But for some of my major classes, I knew there was only like, oh, there's only like 10 spots available. So I set an alarm for when my um, registering period was, and I kept reminding myself to like, immediately press the button to register like right away. Um, and for majoring, um, for counseling, sorry, there's um, major counselors. So there's a counselor for history, but then there's also a counselor for like the broader like social sciences and there's like a general like counselor as well. So there's many options that I could go to for help too. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I've had some pretty negative experiences signing up for um, really impacted engineering courses at a UC. It is incredibly difficult to get those classes, and they only offer them once a year. So if you don't get them, you can't graduate in four years at all. They'll have only 100 spots for 200 kids. It's, it's, it's a lot. Um, so I won't lie, like, that's something I didn't think about when I applied to a public university. I thought I would just be able to get all my classes, but that's unfortunately not the truth 100% of the time. The counselors are always available and really helpful, uh, but they won't do any, you know, they can't get you into the classes. Um, I will say the biggest thing that you can do to get your leg up if you're someone going into like computer science, engineering, like any of the really impacted majors at a UC is to take as many city college classes as you can. Because at least at UCI, uh, registration starts with people that have the most credits. So I entered UCI as a standing junior and I was able to register at the same time as the juniors and get the engineering classes that I needed. So I think I'm definitely warning you just because I didn't know, but uh, my biggest advice would be get ahead while you can and then you'll be, you'll be fine when you're registering for those classes. It's stressful, but it'll work out. You know, my friends may have had to switch some stuff around. They've, you know, gotten some and they've lost some and they might have had, one of my friends had a class that ended at 11 p.m. at night, um, but you'll get there. And um, it's definitely, I, I sometimes wish I'd chosen a private university because I think they, um, I don't know, they, they calm you a little bit more. I think at UCs, they're kind of like, all right, <laughs> register, like, um, and if you don't get it, you don't get it, you know? Um, so that's definitely been a downside and something that you should consider, but um, I really wanted, I really wanted the UC. So I think it's still worth it um, as like a package. Um, yeah, like what Maddie said, uh, dual enrollment absolutely saved me. Um, so I'm a sociology major, which is not as you know as rigorous, I would say, as um, chemical engineering, but it is very popular. Um, but luckily, because I entered with Chris, I was able to enter as a sophomore, and so I could sign up for classes um, at the same time as sophomores while I was a freshman, I guess. Um, so yeah. I personally haven't had any like disaster scenarios because I couldn't get a class. Um, I know some of my friends have, unfortunately. Um, but the best advice I can give, not only dual enrollment, but have your backup plans for your backup plans. Um, and luckily there are some avenues that can help you. For example, um, like for my department, the sociology department has an advisory board which is made up of the counselors for that department. Um, as well as a few professors and students as well. So that's a great resource, um, at least at my school, at my department, um, where you can go ask questions about like enrollment stuff. Um, but also, um, it's not like, I don't think it's applicable to every single major or minor, but um, I've definitely had some success with petitioning for certain classes in other departments to count for my major. So for example, this fall, um, I'm taking an international development class as one of my sociology electives um, because I guess there's like overlap in the curriculum um, and I'm only doing that because there weren't any social classes available in the fall for me to enroll in. Uh, to enroll in. So um, that is definitely, you know, a silver lining to the kind of, you know, rigorous class enrollment 
system. Um, it is very intensive, but I wouldn't I wouldn't say that it would or that it should deter you away from considering a UC because um, I believe there's a lot of benefits to going to a public school. Um, I would say that the issues are definitely not uh, isolated to public schools. Um, there's 14,000 undergrads at Northeastern, so there is definitely still that level of competition, and we also do have that really cool tiered registration system where if you have more credits, then you register earlier. I registered a day and a half uh, to two days before all of my roommates, so that was great. Um, but yeah, I am also a nerd, so I wrote a little script on my computer that clicked the registration button for me like <laughs> in like two seconds. Um, of course you did, Ben. Of course you did. <laughs> so yeah, do that. No, I'm just okay. kidding. Um, but yeah, uh, going into the process knowing that, you're, like having a backup plan and not getting your heart set on one class um, or one pathway is important. I, I created three plans um, and kind of just kept an eye on the classes as the, de as the deadline approached. And kind of my last plan was all classes that I knew I wouldn't have any trouble registering for. So, but yeah, don't let that discourage you don't let that be a part of your college admissions journey. Don't apply to a college because, or don't apply to a college because you think it'll be difficult to get class enrollments um, with the number of credits you're entering with. Um, apply and enroll in what fits best for you, like Tara was saying. It's a match, not a prize, if that's what she said, but um, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, don't, don't, don't think about that too hard at this point in the process. Um, it'll all work out. Yeah. Professors like, can always override your course, almost always override your course enrollment. So I was actually able to get into a class by being really nice and emailing the professor and saying, hey, this is full, but can you add me anyway? And, and then, yeah, you also kind of build that relationship. Or your counselor can also override it. It's like the system is is built flexible enough in most cases, and I've heard of friends who've done that at public school too, that it's not anything you should worry about at this point. I would uh, like to add that at UC's counselors and professors in compacted majors cannot change that, so it is not flexible, but. <laughs> Here we go. Maybe I'm blissfully. <laughs> um, before we, while we're wrapping up, before we give our panel a round of applause, I just, I would be remiss to say that all of these students had their high school experience impacted by, by the COVID pandemic. Um, many spent their junior and, and or senior years um, online and look at them now. And all of these kids that came out of our school during that time I think are, 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 are thriving in every different way and we celebrate everybody's path. We wanna help our students find their path, whatever it is. Doesn't matter. We we celebrate all of them, and so I want to give our panel an applause for sharing their experience. Thank you so much. <laughs>